Alrighty, folks, here are a few more Chapter 7 problems. How long will it take a, hundred, a 1750 watt motor to lift 315 kilogram piano up to a six story window 16 meters above the ground? So let's take a look what we have. Um, power is 1750 watts. Um, the mass that we're lifting is 315 kilograms. And the displacement, the distance that we're lifting is 16 meters. And we want to know time. Okay, how long? So we're looking for time. Power is work done per unit time. And when we're lifting, we're doing work against what? We're doing work against gravity. So this is going to be force of gravity times the displacement, how far it's lifted, per unit time. And we're solving for time. So this is what is going to equal power, and we're looking for time. So time is going to be equal to force of gravity times distance divided by our power rating. So time is going to be force of gravity. And as you know, force of gravity is mass, acceleration of gravity, displacement, divided by our power in watts. So we are going to lift a 315 kilogram piano. It's going to be accelerated by gravity 9.8 meters per second squared. It's going to be raised upwards 16 meters. And that's going to be done by a 1750 watt motor. And if I plug those numbers in, let's see what comes out. 315 times 9.8 times 16 divided by 1750, I get 28.2. Now, what units should those be? They should be seconds. But let's take a look at what units those actually, where they come from, because those are a little mysterious. So what do I have up here? I've got a kilogram times a meter, I've got a second squared in the bottom, times another meter up top, and I've got a watt down below. All right, so what the heck's a watt? Okay, well, a kilogram meters squared per second squared. A watt is a joule per second, and a joule is a newton meter per second or a kilogram meters squared per second squared, and that is a joule, and then there is another second in the bottom. So this gets all kinds of crazy. So this kilogram meters squared per second squared, this is a joule. So I'm going to put that in a different color. Kilogram meters squared per second squared, this is my joule. And then I have another second squared down in the bottom. And now let's take a look at what we've got left. Second squared cancels second squared. Kilograms cancels kilograms. Somehow I, had, I have one too many seconds in the wrong spot. Mary made a boo-boo. Meter squared, meter squared. Uh-oh, I have a second I put in the wrong spot. But that's the second I want. Joules per second, aha, here's what I did. I'm dividing by a watt, which is a joule per second. So this second is in the sub-basement, so it comes up top. There's where my second comes from. I knew it would work. Units always work. But that's where it comes from. We're now getting to the point where the units get a little tricky. And uh, if you love messing with your units, you have to just keep your beans together. All right, here's another one. The Bugatti Veyron Supersport, it's a car, um, can accelerate from 0 to 240 kilometers per hour in 9.8 seconds. It has a mass of 1888 kilograms. What is the average power that the engine delivers during this period of acceleration? And give your answer in horsepower. So we want to know power. Power rating is what we are after. So power is going to be equal to work done per unit time. And the work is going to change into kinetic energy. So the work done is going to be equal to the kinetic energy the car ends up with in an amount of time. So 
what do we know? We know the mass of the car is 1888 kilograms. We know this occurs in 9.80 seconds. We found that right there. We know the change in velocity is from 0 to 240 kilometers per hour. Well, we've been at this long enough to know that that's not going to work. We're going to have to get that in MKS units. So let's get rid of kilometers, go to meters. There's 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Get rid of hours, go to seconds. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour, and we'll end up with meters per second. So let's do the math. 240 times 1,000 divided by 3,600, and I'm going to end up with 66.6 .6 repeating meters per second. So I want to know power rating. So power is going to be change in kinetic energy over time, which is going to be 1 half mass velocity squared per amount of time. So 1 half the mass, 1888 kilograms. Change in velocity, 66.6 .6 repeating meters per second quantity squared. And all this happens in 9.8 seconds. All right, let's throw that in the calculator. 66.6 .6 squared times 1888 times 0.5 divided by 9.8. I end up with a power rating of 4272.62 watts. Now the problem asked us to do this in horsepower, so we have to look on our conversion sheet, get rid of watts, and go into horsepower, and there happens to be 745. 0.7 watts per horsepower, so divide by 745.7, and I end up with 573, rounding it off to three sig figs, horsepower is the average power rating during that acceleration period. All righty. Okay, I think we have one more to do. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see how much time we got left. Oh, we got lots of time. All right, here goes. Um, next problem, number 18. The Tour de France bicycle race has been called the most grueling physical competition in the world. For example, the average power generated per kilogram of body mass by a rider is 6.5 watts. Now, if a rider has a mass of 75 kilograms, so a rider has a mass of 75.0 kilograms, how much work does he do during a 135 kilometer race? So the distance that he races is 135 kilometers or 135,000 meters at an average speed of 12 meters per second. I want to know how much work is done during that amount of time. And the average power rating is 6.50 watts, which are joules per second. So first off, we have to figure out um, work is done. So let's begin with part A. Power is going to be equal to work divided by time work is going to be power times time. Well, in order for us to figure this out, we're going to um, have to kind of figure out to some extent how a little bit more about the race itself. We know the distance, we know the velocity. Um, if we say that there is a this 6.5, oh, this is not just 6.5 watts per kilogram. So this is watts per kilogram. And we have a rider that is 75 kilograms. So that means 75 times 6.5, this rider has a 488 power wattage rating. Now we need this, so that is going to be the power. 
that this person is going to go through. Next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find time. How long is it going to take for this race? Well, velocity is displacement divided by time. So time is going to be equal to displacement divided by velocity. So to find that, time is going to be, it's a 135,000 meter race. And this person is going to have an average speed of 12 meters per second. When we divide that out, that ends up being about 11,250 seconds is the time that it's going to take this person to run the race. So if we take our work equation up here and we solve for how much work is done, work is going to be power times time. We found out our racer is 488 watts of work that's going to be done times 11,250 seconds of time. So that's going to be 488 times 11,250. We end up with 5,490,000 joules of energy that are actually used by this person during the race. Okay, that is part A. Now let's take a look at part B. Part B says, how many food calories will the rider need to fuel his body during this race, keeping in mind that human muscles are only about 25% efficient? All right, so if that's the amount of fuel energy that this person is using, first off, if we're going to try and get into calories, let's first convert from joules to calories. So if I've got 5,490,000 joules, let's kind of get rid of joules and let's convert that into heat calories. So one heat calorie is 4.184 joules, and that's going to be 1.31 times 10 to the sixth calories, and those are heat calories. If I want to go to food calories, 1.31 times 10 to the 6th calories, a food calorie is a kilocalorie. Um, a kilocalorie, there are a 1,000 heat calories in a kilocalorie, so this is going to be uh, 1,310 kilocalories. So that is the amount of food calories that are going to be needed in this situation. Now, if human muscles are only 25% efficient, um, if food muscles are only, excuse me, if muscles are only 25% efficient, um, that means that that is 25% of what is needed. So we're going to have to this, the 1310 is equal to uh, 25 percent of the total amount of energy needed. So the total amount of energy needed is going to be, whoops, 1310 is going to be this divided, the 1310 joules divided by 0 0.24 or 0 0.25 or the 1310 times 4, so it's going to be 5,240 food calories that are going to be used up during the race for a normal person like you and I. That is at least two days worth of food. Um, yeah, if not more, depending upon how much of a slug bunny you and I actually are. All right, that will do for this one, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.